Uh, next question has been asked uh, when someone dies in Pakistan uh, people do khatam e quran and uh, 40 days chilla assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh rabbi shirali sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul lughat lam yalisani yaqul qali well if if you look at the countries like in india pakistan bangladesh and uh, some african countries and uh, uh, probably there's some Arab countries I'm not aware of uh, but definitely I'm aware of uh, India Pakistan and Bangladesh um, in these countries when someone dies they have a special a uh, specific way uh, to set up their funerals and they have the special ways of to 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 do the recitation khatme Quran and uh, when the 40 days pass they have to do something called the uh, Chalisma or something like that and then the yearly anniversary and all these things well um, we do not find anything anything like that in the Quran or uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet nor the Sahaba nobody taught us nobody came out this is just something a ritual there's something like uh, was uh, a monopoly of uh, that some imams or maybe some local imams or something like that so this becomes like a very common in the entire world <laughs> like the, some muslim does that uh, they, they they use the flower they use the like a uh, quran fabric where is like embroidered on the big fabric and they put it on the grave and they they put the a big flat slab on the grave and they made it on the top and they put it all the nicely with the marbles and they, they display the whole grave this entire system is not uh from the quran the teaching of the or the teaching of the prophet uh this was just like basically whatever the local imam telling him to do so simply people are uh following them because uh, this does not uh, uh, the the khatma Quran is basically people do that it will send the reward to the dead now let me clear something khatma Quran or finishing the whole Quran by calling the people to Quran sending the reward to the one someone died with the intention that will send the reward to the dead it does not reward no one except except yourself and if you have an intention that will reward to somebody else it does not reward to anybody else because it's just like a people's business they try to gather someone and they try to raise donations and ask people okay if someone passed away let's do a khatam quran what khatam quran did the prophet do that no did the sahaba do that no did the sahaba do that no but the four uh, the four great scholars may peace and bless me upon them does that no so where does the things come from khatam e quran where did it come from you get like a uh, 30 30 uh, like uh, students and the 30 people gathered there and each of them handing a quran each of them finishing a one quran some of them finishing uh, two parts, one part, three parts, and all of them finish the whole Quran and then Mika, then recite the Fatiha. Where do these things come from? It does not benefit no one, trust me. It is just like people are uh, following their Imams and whatever they learn from their uh, Maulanas and uh, from their scholars, from their leaders. It's just they're following up blindly whatever somebody's telling, they're just simply following. Do not follow blindly, no one you have to come to understanding. Who taught us to do that? When it comes to the matter of the thing, when it comes to the matter of uh, Quran or the Sunnah, when it comes to the life of the Prophet we do have to know where does the root comes from if it was being taught by the Prophet or by the Sahaba, who, who else said that? No one. In order to send the reward to the deceased, the Prophet said there are three things which would uh, reward the dead that becomes his Jariya. number one is the dua the Prophet said the most the person uh, who died the most he is being helpless it is without duas he needs only the duas which will help him and then the three things what are the three things that's only three things which will help uh, benefit. If you make a salah sending the reward to somebody, it's not helping because the Prophet ﷺ did not teach us. So what is our deen tells us to do whatever the Prophet ﷺ says. Number one, the pious children. Number two, that person has invested his money something for the poor people and as long as the that, that uh, investment or that uh, building something stays alive and uh, the reward is going to go to to him or he has left some an education and that education will be benefiting to someone who's died away 
now what if he, this person does not has done while he was alive he passed away so someone else uh, can do with an intention for an example um, if his children does not know what to do his children does know how to send the reward to his father or the mother so he has to ask the scholars how to do that and uh, in order to do that he has to make a lot of the work the children continues to make a work for them and number two if that person does not build anything for poor people so someone else can invest on his name uh, so that reward can be uh, sent to the deceased person and if he does not left any education in this world that would reward for him so anybody else can uh, invest somewhere for an example uh, give the donation give the sadaqa uh, to the Islamic institutions like uh, like a madrasa schools universities or any student who is in a need of uh, doing an islamic studies or any islamic work so he can invest in that uh, particular institution in, with an intention that to send the reward uh, to the person who's been deceased uh, so these are the three words that can be sent to the deceased person so other than that by doing a khatma quran why people are uh, leaving the sunnah they left the sunnah they don't do what the prophet said do they do what their imam said that what their local masjid imam said that what their maulana said that what their imam said that what their uh, what their madhab scholar said that and they would just simply stick to what they say they would understand go back to the sahih hadith or the prophet said that we should just stick to that we should not leave anything else and not any leave any liberal gap to do something else like for an example if the imam tell you to do that but we have to uh, as a person of knowledge so somebody would definitely ask the imam like if this was being taught by the prophet sometimes so many imam does that it's okay now many people does that it's okay khatma quran it's okay do the gathering do the nasheed do the nath and send the reward to the dead it's okay it's okay everything is it's okay the, the mother of islam the religion of islam it is not about it's okay we have to have a really serious concern because this is something related uh, to our judgment day this is something uh, related to our uh, decision on the judgment day either we will go to hell or we will go to heaven so but we have to stick to the quran and the sahih is in order to be uh, following the right path not somebody else